Video Part 5 in Gandhiji Biography Nital stain for manual work, generally created an elite administrative bureaucracy. Gandhi favored an education system with far greater emphasis on learning skills in practical and useful work, one that included physical, mental, and spiritual studies. His methodology sought to treat all professions equal and pay everyone the same. Gandhi called his ideas Nitalim, literally, new education. He believed that the Western-style education violated and destroyed the indigenous cultures. A different basic education model, he believed, would lead to better self-awareness, prepare people to treat all work equally respectable and valued, and lead to a society with less social diseases. Nitalim evolved out of his experiences at the Tolstoy farm in South Africa, and Gandhi attempted to formulate the new system at the Sevagram Ashram after 1937. Nehru government's vision of an industrialist, centrally planned economy after 1947 had scant place for Gandhi's village-oriented approach. In his autobiography, Gandhi wrote that he believed every Hindu child must learn Sanskrit because its historic and spiritual texts are in that language. Swaraj, Self-Rule Gandhi believed that Swaraj not only can be attained with non-violence, but it can also be run with non-violence. A military is unnecessary, because any aggressor can be thrown out using the method of non-violent non-CO operation. While the military is unnecessary in a nation organized under Swaraj principle, Gandhi added that a police force is necessary given human nature. However, the state would limit the use of weapons by the police to the minimum, aiming for their use as a restraining force. According to Gandhi, a nonviolent said Gandhi. Tawari states that Gandhi saw democracy as more than a system of government, it meant promoting both individuality and the self-discipline of the community. Democracy meant settling disputes in a nonviolent manner, it required freedom of thought and expression. For Gandhi, democracy was a way of life. Hindu Nationalism and Revivalism Some scholars state Gandhi supported a religiously diverse India, while others state that the Muslim leaders who championed the partition and creation of a separate Muslim Pakistan considered Gandhi to be Hindu nationalist or revivalist. For example, in his letters to Muhammad Iqbal, Jinnah accused Gandhi to be favoring a Hindu rule and revivalism, that Gandhi-led Indian National Congress was a fascist party. In an interview with C.F. Andrews, Gandhi stated that if we believe all religions teach the same message of love and peace between all human beings, then there is neither any rationale nor need for proselytization or attempts to convert people from one religion to another. Gandhi opposed missionary organizations who criticized Indian religions then attempted to convert followers of Indian religions to Islam or Christianity. In Gandhi's view, those who attempt to convert a Hindu, they must harbor in their breasts the belief that Hinduism is an error and that their own religion is the only true religion. Gandhi believed that people who demand religious respect and rights must also show the same respect and grant the same rights to followers of other religions. He stated that spiritual studies must encourage a Hindu to become a better Hindu, a Muslim to become a better Muslim, and a Christian a better Christian. According to Gandhi, religion is not about what a man believes, it is about how a man lives, how he relates to other people, his conduct towards others, and one's relationship to one's conception of God. It is not important to convert or to join any religion, but it is important to improve one's way of life and conduct by absorbing ideas from any source and any religion, believed Gandhi. Gandhian Economics Gandhi believed in the Sarvodaya economic model, which literally means welfare, upliftment of all. This, states Bat, was a very different economic model than the socialism model championed and followed by Free India by Nehru India's first Prime Minister. To both, according to Bat, removing poverty and unemployment were the objective, but the Gandhian economic and development approach preferred adapting technology and infrastructure to suit the local situation, in contrast to Nehru's large-scale, socialized state-owned enterprises. To Gandhi, the economic philosophy that aims at greatest good for the greatest number was fundamentally flawed, and his alternative proposal Sarvodaya set its aim at the greatest good for all. He believed that the best economic system not only cared to lift the poor, less skilled, of impoverished background but also empowered to lift the rich, 
highly skilled, of capital means and landlords. Violence against any human being, born poor or rich, is wrong, believed Gandhi. He stated that the mandate theory of majoritarian democracy should not be pushed to absurd extremes, individual freedoms should never be denied, and no person should ever be made a social or economic slave to the resolutions of majorities. Gandhi challenged Nehru and the modernizers in the late 1930s who called for rapid industrialization on the Soviet model, Gandhi denounced that as dehumanizing and contrary to the needs of the villages where the great majority of the people lived. After Gandhi's assassination, Nehru led India in accordance with his personal socialist convictions. Historian Karavala Pandikatu says it was Nehru's vision, not Gandhi's, that was eventually preferred by the Indian state. Gandhi called for ending poverty through improved agriculture and small-scale cottage rural industries. Gandhi's economic thinking disagreed with Marx, according to the political theory scholar and economist Bhikkhu Parak. Gandhi refused to endorse the view that economic forces are best understood as antagonistic class interests. He argued that no man can degrade or brutalize the other without degrading and brutalizing himself and that sustainable economic growth comes from service, not from exploitation. Further, believed Gandhi, in a free nation, victims exist only when they see operate with their oppressor, and an economic and political system that offered increasing alternatives gave power of choice to the poorest man. While disagreeing with Nehru about the socialist economic model, Gandhi also critiqued capitalism that was driven by endless wants and a materialistic view of man. This, he believed, created a vicious vested system of materialism at the cost of other human needs, such as spirituality and social relationships. To Gandhi, states Parak, both communism and capitalism were wrong, in part because both focused exclusively on a materialistic view of man, and because the former deified the state with unlimited power of violence, while the latter deified capital. He believed that a better economic system is one which does not impoverish one's culture and spiritual pursuits. Gandhism Gandhism designates the ideas and principles Gandhi promoted, of central importance is nonviolent resistance. A Gandhian can mean either an individual who follows, or a specific philosophy which is attributed to, Gandhism. M. M. Sankter argues that Gandhism is not a systematic position in metaphysics or in political philosophy. Rather, it is a political creed, an economic doctrine, a religious outlook, a moral precept, and especially, a humanitarian worldview. It is an effort not to systematize wisdom but to transform society and is based on an undying faith in the goodness of human nature. However, Gandhi himself did not approve of the notion of Gandhism, as he explained in 1936. There is no such thing as Gandhism, and I do not want to leave any sect after me. I do not claim to have originated any new principle or doctrine. I have simply tried in my own way to apply the eternal truths to our daily life and problems. The opinions I have formed and the conclusions I have arrived at are not final. I may change them tomorrow. I have nothing new to teach the world. Truth and nonviolence are as old as the hills. Literary Works Gandhi was a prolific writer. One of Gandhi's earliest publications, Hein Swaraj, published in Gujarati in 1909, became the intellectual blueprint for India's independence movement. The book was translated into English the next year, with a copyright legend that read No Rights Reserved. For decades he edited several newspapers including Harijan in Gujarati, in Hindi and in the English language, Indian Opinion while in South Africa and, Young India, in English, and Navahivan, a Gujarati monthly, on his return to India. Later, Navahivan was also published in Hindi. In addition, he wrote letters almost every day to individuals and newspapers. Gandhi also wrote several books including his autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth, of which he bought the entire first edition to make sure it was reprinted. 347 his other autobiographies included, Satyagraha in South Africa about his struggle there, Hind Swaraj or Indian Home Rule, a political pamphlet, and a paraphrase in Gujarati of John Ruskin's Unto This Last. This last essay can be considered his program on economics. He also wrote extensively on vegetarianism, diet, and health, 
religion, social reforms, etc. Gandhi usually wrote in Gujarati, though he also revised the Hindi and English translations of his books. Gandhi's complete works were published by the Indian government under the name The Collected Works of Mahatma Gandhi in the 1960s. The writings comprise about 50,000 pages published in about a hundred volumes. In 2000, a revised edition of the complete works sparked a controversy, as it contained a large number of errors and omissions. The Indian government later withdrew the revised edition. Largest Gandhi statue located between Vidhana Sudha and Vikasa Sudha, Bengaluru. Gandhi influenced important leaders and political movements. Leaders of the civil rights movement in the United States, including Martin Luther King Jr., James Lawson, and James Bevel, drew from the writings of Gandhi in the development of their own theories about nonviolence. King said Christ gave us the goals and Mahatma Gandhi the tactics. King sometimes referred to Gandhi as the little brown saint. Anti-apartheid activist and former president of South Africa, Nelson Mandela, was inspired by Gandhi. Others include Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan 404 Steve Biko, and Aung San Suukyi. In his early years, the former president of South Africa Nelson Mandela was a follower of the nonviolent resistance philosophy of Gandhi. Bana and Vahid commented on these events as Gandhi inspired succeeding generations of South African activists seeking to end white rule. This legacy connects him to Nelson Mandela, in a sense, Mandela completed what Gandhi started. Gandhi's life and teachings inspired many who specifically referred to Gandhi as their mentor or who dedicated their lives to spreading Gandhi's ideas. In Europe, Romain Roland was the first to discuss Gandhi in his 1924 book Mahatma Gandhi, and Brazilian anarchist and feminist Maria Lacerda de Moura wrote about Gandhi in her work on pacifism. In 1931, notable European physicist Albert Einstein exchanged written letters with Gandhi, and called him a role model for the generations to come in a letter writing about him. Einstein said of Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi's life achievement stands unique in political history. He has invented a completely new and humane means for the liberation war of an oppressed country, and practiced it with greatest energy and devotion. The moral influence he had on the consciously thinking human being of the entire civilized world will probably be much more lasting than it seems in our time with its overestimation of brutal violent forces. Because lasting will only be the work of such statesmen who wake up and strengthen the moral power of their people through their example and educational works. We may all be happy and grateful that destiny gifted us with such an enlightened contemporary, a role model for the generations to come. Generations to come will scarce believe that such a one as this walked the earth in flesh and blood. Lanza del Vasto went to India in 1936 intending to live with Gandhi, he later returned to Europe to spread Gandhi's philosophy and founded the Community of the Ark in 1948, modeled after Gandhi's ashrams. Madeleine Slade, known as Myra Ben, was the daughter of a British admiral who spent much of her adult life in India as a devotee of Gandhi. In addition, the British musician John Lennon referred to Gandhi when discussing his views on nonviolence. At the Khan Lions International Advertising Festival in 2007, former U.S. Vice President and environmentalist Al Gore spoke of Gandhi's influence on him. U.S. President Barack Obama in a 2010 address to the Parliament of India said that, I am mindful that I might not be standing before you today, as President of the United States, had it not been for Gandhi and the message he shared with America and the world. Obama in September 2009 said that his biggest inspiration came from Gandhi. His reply was in response to the question who was the one person, dead or alive, that you would choose to dine with. He continued that he's somebody I find a lot of inspiration in. He inspired Dr. King with his message of nonviolence. He ended up doing so much and changed the world just by the power of his ethics. Time magazine named the 14th Dalai Lama, Lech Walesa, Martin Luther King Jr., Cesar Chavez, Aung San Suukyi, Benigno Aquino Jr., Desmond Tutu, and Nelson Mandela as children of Gandhi and his spiritual heirs to nonviolence. The Mahatma Gandhi District in Houston, Texas, United States, an ethnic Indian enclave, is officially named after Gandhi. 
Gandhi's ideas had a significant influence on 20th century philosophy. It began with his engagement with Romain Roland and Martin Buber. Jean-Luc Nancy said that the French philosopher Maurice Blancot engaged critically with Gauwished social workers, world leaders, and citizens. Nelson Mandela, the leader of South Africa's struggle to eradicate racial discrimination and segregation, was a prominent non-Indian recipient. In 2011, Time magazine named Gandhi as one of the top 25 political icons of all time. Gandhi did not receive the Nobel Peace Prize, although he was nominated five times between 1937 and 1948, including the first ever nomination by the American Friends Service Committee, though he made the short list only twice, in 1937 and 1947. Decades later, the Nobel Committee publicly declared its regret for the omission, and admitted to deeply divided nationalistic opinion denying the award. Gandhi was nominated in 1948 but was assassinated before nominations closed. That year, the committee chose not to award the Peace Prize stating that there was no suitable living candidate and later research shows that the possibility of awarding the prize posthumously to Gandhi was discussed and that the reference to no suitable living candidate was to Gandhi. Geir Lundstad, Secretary of Norwegian Nobel Committee in 2006 said, the greatest omission in our 106-year history is undoubtedly that Mahatma Gandhi never received the Nobel Peace Prize. Gandhi could do without the Nobel Peace Prize, whether Nobel Committee can do without Gandhi is the question. When the 14th Dalai Lama was awarded the prize in 1989, the chairman of the committee said that this was in part a tribute to the memory of Mahatma Gandhi. In the summer of 1995, the North American Vegetarian Society inducted him posthumously into the Vegetarian Hall of Fame. Father of the Nation Indians widely describe Gandhi as the father of the nation. Origin of this title is traced back to a radio address, on Singapore Radio, on July 6, 1944 by Subhash Chandra Bose where Bose addressed Gandhi as the father of the nation. On April 28, 1947, Sarojini Naidu during a conference also referred Gandhi as father of the nation. However, in response to an RTI application in 2012, the government of India stated that the constitution of India did not permit any titles except ones acquired through education or military service. Film, Theater and Literature A five-hour nine-minute long biographical documentary film, Mahatma, Life of Gandhi, 1869-1948, made by Vithal Bhai Javeri in 1968, quoting Gandhi's words and using black and white archival footage and photographs, captures the history of those times. Ben Kingsley portrayed him in Richard Attenborough's 1982 film Gandhi, which won the Academy Award for Best Picture. It was based on the biography by Louis Fisher. The 1996 film The Making of the Mahatma documented Gandhi's time in South Africa and his transformation from an inexperienced barrister to recognized political leader. Gandhi was a central figure in the 2006 Bollywood comedy film Late Raho Manabai. Yanu Berua's main Gandhi K.O. Nahinmara, I Did Not Kill Gandhi, places contemporary society as a backdrop with its vanishing memory of Gandhi's values as a metaphor for the senile forgetfulness of the protagonist of his 2005 film, writes Vinay Lau. The 1979 opera Satyagraha by American composer Philip Glass is loosely based on Gandhi's life. The opera's libretto, taken from the Bhagavad Gita, is sung in the original Sanskrit. Anti-Gandhi themes have also been showcased through films and plays. The 1995 Marathi play Gandhi Virad Gandhi explored the relationship between Gandhi and his son Haralal. The 2007 film, Gandhi, My Father was inspired on the same theme. The 1989 Marathi play Meenath Yuram God Sabaltoy and the 1997 Hindi play Gandhi Amptkar criticized Gandhi and his principles. Yeah.